Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our videos on best practices. And today we're going to talk about the winter formula. So I'm here at Central Office and we're going to go inside and we'll see what we can find out. So come on along. All right, we're here now at uh, Sonia Simpson's office and we're going to go in here and talk to her about the snow and ice uh, formula. So come on in and we'll see what she's got to say. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Carl. Hey, I just wondered if you could give us a little bit of an overview on the snow and ice formula here at ODOT. Sure, have a seat. Oh, okay. Sure, the winter formula is the big picture of what we use to achieve excellence in snow and ice removal here at ODOT. Uh -huh. So the first part of the winter formula is people. Um, our people are our biggest asset. Um, we have a strong, well-trained workforce that goes out to remove snow and ice all over the state um, all mm -hmm. winter long. Sometimes in some places that workforce also includes seasonal employees and also auxiliary drivers that come in from all over the department to help out. Um, but these persons are trained in how to remove snow and ice properly and how to follow all the safety standards that we set forth here at ODOT. Okay. The next portion of the winter formula is materials. Uh, materials are a big portion of the snow and ice formula because without salt specifically, you know, there is no real snow and ice removal without man manually plowing everything. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to make sure that all our salt contracts are in place, all our materials contracts related to snow and ice, which might also include calcium chloride, um, also any um, organic, um, such as beet juice matter that we might use. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that those are all in place and they're bid and they're ready to go so that all the drivers have to do is make sure that they're ready to fill their trucks from the barns and get out there on the roads. Um, another big portion of the winter formula um, is equipment. Um, we work very closely with equipment management, Doug Burke and his group, so if you haven't talked to them, you really should. Uh -huh. um, they work to make sure that we get new, newer trucks in, we have a shorter truck cycle time, depending on where you are in the state, to make sure that the trucks are able and ready to do the job that are set forth in our task to remove snow and ice. And the last portion of the winter formula is forecasting. Um, weather uh, is transient. You don't know what's going to happen all the time. We have ARWIS stations all throughout the state, and our ARWIS manager is someone you should see next, Abder Johnson. He can tell you all about how ARWIS works along with our paid forecasting to make sure we know what's coming and we're ready for it. Well, okay. Well, I thank you for your time, and uh, let's go down and see Abner and see what he's got to say about the weather. A portion of our winter formula is the weather, and we're going to go back here and talk to Abner Johnson and see what he can tell us about what he does as part of that winter formula. Hello, Abner. You're the man. You, <laughs> you, you helped me out there, Abner. Hey, uh, just wondering if uh, you could kind of give me a little bit on uh, your snow and ice uh, weather conditions and how you uh, look at the weather here at ODOT. One of the things that we try to accomplish here in, in snow and ice is to make sure that we cover two key areas. Um, one of those areas is um, the collection and dissemination of information, and the other part is operations. Well, what we do here is the information portion of it, and we do that uh, a number of ways. We collect information by use of uh, uh, getting the, the pieces that National Weather Service provides, but then we also uh, supplement that through our own resources by having um, what we call what we call ARWIS, which is Road Weather Information Systems. It's a combination of individual weather stations as well as servers, data, data collection to be able to, to assimilate that information and get it out to people. So that's our that's our, uh, our plan to be able to try and um, and predict when uh, deteriorating weather conditions is going to occur and be able to get that into the hands of our frontline managers and first responders uh, in a timely manner. There are just there are key elements that our managers need to have in order to be able to. Uh, uh, timely deploy their uh, resources. ODOT has the RWIS system uh, or these environmental sensing stations, which are the individual weather stations that are out there in the field. We're able to detect uh, in, in five minute intervals or near real time what actually is occurring on the road. The, it's a problem for us when we go out and we put salt out on the road and then nothing happens and we waste the salt, we waste the effort, but then the traffic comes along and beats that salt off the road and then after that, then we get frozen precipitation and now it looks like we're late, but we have very clear berms. That's not a good thing. What we want to try to do is get, is get the right material in the right place at the right time in order to make sure that we attain and maintain a safe and passable highway system. 
okay. Well, this sounds like you pretty much got a handle on it there, Abner. Yeah, that's the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you very much for your time. No problem. There's a lot of information you put out here with us today. Thank so you. I thank you very much. Right. And uh, if you come along with us, we're going to go down to our equipment section. We're going to talk about, you know, all the different types of equipment we use to attack the snow and ice uh, here at ODOT. So come on along. We're down here at Central Office Garage, and uh, we're going to be talking with Doug Burke, and he uh, works for the Office of Equipment Management, and we're going to talk about the equipment we use uh, here at Central Office, uh, our, our dump trucks, plows, spreaders, and uh, how you doing, Doug? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Uh, could you just kind of give, give me an overview of uh, what we do here with the Office of Equipment Management and our operations and equipment? Okay. Our office is in charge of building the dump trucks buying the dump trucks and making sure they're all assembled and get out to the districts. Uh, what you're looking at here is an International 7400. It's a tandem axle by the set of dual drives on the rear. This is one of the trucks that we use for snow and ice. Our other option would be a single axle truck. It has one single drive in the back. The counties pick what trucks they want based on their needs, their salt routes, what kind of snow conditions they're in all those types of options they put together and then they make the determination whether they want a single or a tandem. In the last couple years we've had a large amount of rear end collisions. What we're seeing is we have collisions that are four to five times the amount that surrounding states have. Now we have a lot of cars on the road. We probably have a higher traffic volume than a lot of cars or states around us. The biggest thing that we looked at was when we're running amber lights and only amber lights it's very hard to determine whether or not we're a dump truck, trash truck, uh, tow truck, anything else like that out on the road. So we wanted to find a way that distinguishes us from anything else. What we saw was as vehicles were coming up on us, they were going too fast for our speed, and before they could determine that we actually were a snowplow truck driving slower, they were already inside the window that they're going to hit us even if they break. So our goal was to come up with a lighting pattern that could be seen a long distance away and there was no question that that's what is on the road, a snowplow truck. So one of the options was to go to a brighter light that can be seen farther away. The other option was to change the color pattern and that required a law change. So what, what happened was last summer we got the law changed in 2012 and we started implementing the, the, that this year. What came out of it was a light that is now amber, white, and green. Almost nobody's using green out there. Some are using white, everybody's using amber. Our opinion is if we put a truck out there that had all of those colors strobing on it, it doesn't matter if you're a mile or three miles away, which these have been seen at three miles now, that truck is a snowplow truck. There's no question about it. That person can be ready to break at that point as opposed to 300 feet off our rear end. Okay. Well, okay. I thank you very much, Doug, okay. and uh, appreciate you. all your help here today. And now uh, I believe we can go up and uh, to central office, and we'll talk with Scott Lucas and Thomas Lydon. They're going to kind of go over materials with us and go over the materials application guidelines. So come on along. We're here with uh, Scott Lucas and Thomas Lydon. Hello, Scott. Hey, how you doing, Thomas? Carl? Hey, Carl. You're going to talk to us about the uh, another portion of our winter formula here. We're going to talk about materials. So could you kind of give us an explanation what your office does as far as the materials and kind of go over that with me? Sure. Yeah, okay. There's, um, well, there's several things, and, and Scott and I were just reviewing uh, this past year's SALT contract, mm -hmm. oh, and okay. we are going to be making some changes in response to some of the uh, pricing structure that we saw uh, for this past year. Each year, our office sells a statewide contract for use by the districts and the counties when they're ordering salt. What we're trying to do is get the, the best value for the, uh, the taxpayer, and we sell an individual contract for each of the county managers to order salt from. And salt is really just one uh, material at the disposal of the, uh, the county managers. And what we, um, what we put together is a, a material applications guideline which guides the manager in making decisions based on the conditions that they're experiencing. We have a, a list of different material types and pavement temperatures where they want, may want to um, use those, those materials. And then we're also looking at light snowfall, heavy snowfall, and, and freezing rain. Scott, why don't you talk about, other than salt, why don't you talk about some of the other um, 
products that we use. Right, and, and as, as part of all these products and stuff, one thing we do for a contract, we use PNS uh, specifications, which are Pacific Northwest Snow Finders. And it's pretty much a standard across the, the U.S. on that for uh, de-icing materials and that. But uh, we'll use other things like uh, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, beet juice, um, some other agricultural products and that for uh, de-icing. I mean, the whole purpose is to depress that freezing point of water down to where it uh, will melt that snow and ice off the roadways. It's our goal to get the motorist back up to speed as soon as we can. Most motorists are gonna understand if there's snowfall, speeds will drop. But our level of service measurements is to get the motorist back up to their expected speed within three hours after the end of a snow and ice event. And we believe that's a, a, a great standard for us to provide. So when you're doing your research, do you communicate with the other snow belt states to see what they use and, and what works best for them? Uh, yes, we do, actually. We, uh, I'm a part of what they call a Clear Roads. It's a, a pooled fund uh, research program. And I communicate a lot with the other different snow and ice coordinators throughout the states, and uh, actually in Canada also. And we talk about different materials and different practices along with that too. So that's one thing that's nice is that for the materials we're using here at Ozod, it's not just something we're making up uh, on our own. We're getting a lot of other data from other states, um, universities, other people who use these materials out there and have studied them in great detail to make sure we're using the best, most cost efficient uh, material out there on the market. Thomas, you told me about uh, a county manager there, they kind of have their own. Maybe we'll just go out and uh, talk to one and, and, and see what his theory is and how he uses the formula. Sounds good. Sounds great. All right. All right. Uh, thank All right. you very Thanks much, guys. I appreciate it. You're quite so, welcome. We're going to go out here and we'll see uh, what one of our counties has to say and how they do their uh, snow and ice operation. On our way to the county garage, we decided to stop at one of our salt stockpiles. And in behind me here, we have one of our ODOT tandem dump trucks, which normally holds about 10 ton. And on the side of the truck there, you see uh, some brine tanks, which holds about 300 gallon. Now on behind there, we have the stockpile, and there's estimated to be about 48,000 ton of salt, uh, of salt there. And ODOT, typically in a winter, will use about 650,000 ton. So we use quite a bit of salt in an average winter. We're here in Westerville. And we're going to talk to the crew members from the garage and see what they have to say about the winter formula and how they attack the snow and ice. So come on along. Hello, guys. Hi, Carl. How you doing? Carl. Are you doing, Calvin? Mitch? Oh. I'm here with Mitch Blackford. He's the transportation administrator here at the garage. And Mitch, uh, could you sit down and kind of just tell us uh, what we do or how you do your snow and ice here at Westerville? Carl, my role as a county administrator is to maintain a constant state of readiness and to make sure all the resources are in place for the managers and the highway technicians to do a great job. The three components of the resources are the labor, the equipment, and the materials. Once those are set, we are ready to uh, attack any event. So as a weather event approaches, I watch the weather on the news and I pay attention to our ODOT weather service provider and I try to formulate some type of game plan on how we're going to attack that particular storm. From there, I talk to other managers in surrounding counties to make sure they're on the same page and that way we can maintain a sense of uh, consistency across county lines on the freeways or state routes for the motoring public. So after I watch the weather events, formulate a game plan, I talk to uh, Calvin Pierce here at Westerville, he's the manager, and give him my intent or plans of that storm. From there, he, he can discuss a little bit about how he, he establishes his crews here at the Westerville Garage. After talking with Mitch and we make our game plan, we will go down to call out list and set up the HTs that we feel needed to take care of the event, and uh, after that, We'll uh, discuss with other managers within the county to know how many guys, how many team members we have at each garage and what routes are being taken care of by whom. So if we have any trouble calls or anything, we can communicate with one another and the drivers so we can get the situation handled a lot quicker. And uh, after that, we like to let our um, communications person know, uh, Nancy Burton knows, so she can communicate with the traveling public how many people we have out on our routes and everything. And then we 
pretty much turn it over to the HTs, which they have to pre-trip their trucks. Jim Cook is here, and he can go through with what they do to prepare. Uh, as HTs, we uh, go through each truck, uh, make sure they're safe for, for our use out on the road and for the motoring public. So that includes checking oil, antifreeze, washer fluid. Uh, if we're using the plow, we'll go through the plow, make sure there's no cracks, the plow blade isn't worn down. Uh, we'll check all our lights, our strobes, our turn signals, go through and check the tires, make sure they're all inflated and ready to go. Uh, check our safety equipment, flares and triangles, and then make sure we've got our personal protective equipment, our vest, our hard hats, gloves, coats, if it's really cold out there. Uh, from there, we'll go out, uh, load the trucks up with salt, brine, or calcium, depending on how cold it is. Uh, and then we'll head out onto the roads and start taking care of the roads. Uh, and like they said, if the event lasts, you know, more than one shift, when we come back in, we, we'll refill our salt, our brine, refuel the trucks with diesel, uh, check the plows out, run them in the wash bay, clean all the windows, all the lights, all the glass, all the important stuff so you can see, and then let the next guys get in. They can run through it real quick and make sure everything's there that they need and they can get back out so there isn't a lot of downtime where the roads get covered up. And then once the storm's over, they let us, uh, we run out there and empty all the salt out, get them in the wash bay and get them cleaned up real good for the next one. All right, guys, uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Carl. I really Thanks, appreciate Carl. it. You guys, be careful out there and be safe. Thank you for watching our video on best practices of the winter formula. Stay tuned, we have more videos to come. Thank you.